The British Deputy High Commissioner, Harriet Thompson, also raises concerns about the movement of passengers from Abuja to Kaduna. I asked to take the floor to speak on behalf of the embassies uh, in order to clear up any confusion that there might be around the position of the British High Commission. We have no intention and never have had any intention of withdrawing our staff, of packing up and going home whilst the airport closes. So just to clear up any confusion on that matter, I've never, never suggested that's what will happen. It won't. We remain very keen to work with the Ministry and with all the ministers and agencies of the Federal Government of Nigeria to uh, find a, a sensible alternative whilst the Abuja Airport is closed. I'll save some of the questions from my colleagues uh, for a different forum in the interest of time and just raise the ones that are most pertinent to the wider audience. Very interested to hear what the uh, opinions of the international airlines are, obviously, so I'm grateful to hear what uh, the representative said earlier, and we look forward to hearing more from them. We're interested in how many international operators currently fly in and out of Kaduna Airport, and how many international flights there are a week. Um, we're interested in the road between Kaduna and Abuja. Firstly, Will the military roadblocks on that road be removed in order to facilitate the journey or will they conversely be augmented in order to improve security? We're interested in how passengers who choose to travel independently rather than on the government provided transport, how those passengers will be treated on that road. Will they be subject to increased security checks and will that route therefore take longer? Are there any contingency plans to um, augment the number of domestic flights between Lagos and Abuja should any international airlines choose to increase their flights in and out of Lagos rather than use Kaduna? Her questions get responses from the host of the meeting. If you are patrolling the road 24-7, there may not be need for roadblocks really because you have presence of security at every one minute. So that, that answers that one. And as to independent passengers who choose to go to Abuja, I mean Kaduna, to fly out. As regarding to those passengers that will go independently, of course there would be. And I did say in my presentation that we'll have two screening points. One in Abuja and one also in Kaduna at the airport as normal. And this is because you never can tell. Even those that are supposedly screened here in Abuja will still go through rescreening just at the foot of the aircraft to ensure that we are safe and we are very secure. Uh, as to the question whether there will be an increase in domestic flights from Lagos into Abuja, yes, there will be. It is all of those flights that are meant to come to Abuja that will now go to Kaduna. So there will be increase. Um, as to the question whether the international airlines, some of them, may decide not to go to Kaduna, I think it's a commercial decision that they should look at and take. So. The passenger, the customer, the airline are all working together. If the airline think that they can go to Lagos and their passengers pay more, do more work to get into the hinterland, I think it's a commercial decision that they should sit down and think very well. And then we are more than willing here to do anything that they want to ensure that their operations are smooth in the city of Kaduna. And the last question as to um, how many international flights are out of uh, Kaduna. Kaduna is categorized as a seasonal international airport. Uh, most of it, we do it during the Hajj operations with those wide capacity, multiple aisle, uh, uh, um, big uh, carriers, and also as small ones. So Kaduna, yes, has the capacity to take jumbo jets and triple sevens in and out with a very uh, secure, safe, and smooth operations. And uh, what we'll be doing, like I said, um, the international airlines and um, uh, other stakeholders, including AON, would inspect Kaduna, the airport, the city, and the road um, prior to our movement in March 8. Analysts say that the temporary closure of Abuja Airport, the country's second busiest after the commercial capital Lagos, will have a negative impact on Africa's biggest economy, which fell into recession in 2016 for the first time in 25 years. Passengers traveling to Abuja will have to fly to Kaduna and travel in bus shuttles guarded by security provided by the government to the capital on a potholed road 
where kidnappings and accidents have taken place in the last few years. After the stakeholders meeting, the Minister of State for Aviation takes a tour of the alternative Kaduna Airport with an assurance on its readiness for operations during the six-week closure of Namdia Zikwe International Airport. The minister also assures that the terminal building under construction will meet the March 8 deadline. See how it goes all the very smooth, looking nice, with all the runway edge lights. They are all in place, you could see. Um, so this runway is very ready and uh, to take uh, the type of craft that uh, is anticipated to be landing and taking off on this uh, surface. You can see the runway surface is very smooth, it's well marked. You can also see the um, edge lights and so on, they are all in place. So as far as this facility is concerned, it's more than uh, adequate enough to be able to carry um, the uh, type of craft that we anticipate would be landing and taking off on this field. Today is 3,000 meters and um, 45 with a temple 5 shoulder. Ilori, Joss and Makardi airports have been suggested as alternative, but Mr. Sirika insists it's as far as Kaduna is to Abuja, but that they lack dual carriageways and train services that would facilitate traffic movement of passengers to Abuja. With so much controversy over the planned closure of Namdia Zikiwe Airport, the Senate summons the Minister of Transport, Mr. Roti Miyamechi, and the Minister of State for Aviation, Senator Hadi Sirika, for questioning. These lawmakers are vehemently opposed to the closure of the airport for six weeks. They express concern over the state of the Kaduna Expressway, which has become a death trap and home to armed robbers and kidnappers. The Minister of State for Aviation speaks. As a matter of fact, in all length and breadth of the runway, have totally collapsed. And this collapse, it is not the surface. It's not the asphalt surface. It is the entire architecture of that runway from bottom up in all of the four layers. You do explore other options that may not necessarily mean closing down the airport before the runway is repaired. We have maintained runways and closed airports at night. It's not new. If you are digging up the entire architecture and building up a new runway like we're going to do, it's tough, difficult. It affects the riding quality of the runway. I think you've told us that the repairs of the runway is 5.8 billion. We still believe that it is prudent for us for that six weeks to spend almost the same cost of the rehabilitation in just carrying out this exercise. I do believe that even if, even if it will be doubled, it is worth the life of the citizens of Nigeria and those that are coming to Nigeria to do businesses. Talks seem not to have ended yet. The Minister of State for Aviation is to appear before the Senate again, even as he reveals that the planned rehabilitation of the runway in Namdia Zikiwe International Airport, Abuja, is to gulp 5.8 billion naira.